In this third episode of our Modifying Your House Plans for ICF series, we're going to be constructing some custom blocks in AutoCAD uh, using the uh, form profiles supplied by Nodura. So I'm going to scroll down to 8 inch, which is what we're using, and we're going to start with the standard form unit. So this block is 13 and a quarter inches wide by 96 inches long. So we're going to jump over to AutoCAD on this other pane here and draw that up really quick. So I'm going to start with a rectangle. That's, oops, first I gotta change my units to architectural again. So now I can draw a rectangle that's 13 and a quarter inches wide by 96 inches tall. And then according to the website, the foam is approximately two inches Two and five eighths inches, and then I'm just going to go ahead and mirror that to the other side. Okay, so now we kind of have a block. Uh, let's do some styling really quick. So typically, I can actually use the explode command to turn this from a rectangle back into individual lines. But we're going to make the outside uh, thick. So let's say 0.35. The inside detail including the seams thin, and then let's add some quick um, hatching. So hatch, and then I'm going to pick an internal point. Uh, AutoCAD actually has a built-in concrete uh, hatch, and that looks like it's about the right size, so I'm going to leave that. And then the standard hatch for foam is actually this cross pattern, but that's way too dense, so we can take the scale property up here and increase that. So now what we can do is to turn this in from an object into a block. We can just highlight the whole thing and then type block. And I'm going to give it a name. 8, eight inch core Nadura 8 foot straight. So then I can also pick a base point and this is going to be the insertion point for the object when we uh, actually put it into our drawing. So I don't really need to fill out any of this other stuff. And now that we have a block, we can say insert. Well, the first thing you'll notice is that all of a sudden this is like one object instead of individual pieces. But we can also go insert, and it'll come up with this little uh, palette here. Oops, on my other screen. Here we go. So now I can click and automatically add another one. And so as you can see, we can start stacking them together just makes it quicker to figure out what uh, individual bill segments look like. Okay, so that's the straight block. Let's get the corner form really quick. So we go back to the Nero Dura website, and we want the 90 degree corner form. So I open up the PDF, and it is 17 and 5 eighths long by 33 and 5 eighths wide. So let's go ahead and draw that. 17 and 5 by 8, and then it is, we don't want to get this wrong, 33 and 5 eighths long. And of course, it's still 13 and a quarter wide. And I don't know where these are actually going to line up, so what I'm going to do is just overshoot a little bit. And then I'm using the fill command F to clean up that corner. We can also use offset with 2 and 5 eighths inch foam to get the foam profile. And then again, we'll use fillet to clean it up. Let's do the same thing where we make the outlines uh, thick. We can go up here to our line width, change it to 0.35, and then change everything internal. 0.18, and then we hit H for hatch. Our foam, easy, and then hit spacebar to repeat the last command. Then we'll go back to concrete, which was one on our other model. Close hatch creation. And the one thing I forgot to do in the other model is you want to highlight these hatch um, areas and 
Oops. Highlight it. I'm going to go back to home. We want to change that to be really fine, 0.13 millimeter lines. And then we can highlight the whole thing again, hit block. And I'll say 8 inch or Nudura 90 degree corner. And again, we want to pick a reasonable point. And we can hit OK. So now we can take these blocks and kind of stack them. So uh, let's fix that, um, the fact that we didn't set the line weight properly on this block. So I double clicked it, and now it opens up this edit block definition. And if I double click that again, it'll take us into the block editor, which is kind of this custom window that we can use to modify blocks. So I'm going to change it in here. And now if I sit close block editor, I'll ask me if I want to save that, and I do. Now we can't really see um, the differences in line weights, and that's because by default AutoCAD has line weights turned off. But if I go plot and send it out to a printer really quick, you'll immediately see the difference. So I'm just selecting print to PDF, uh, paper size A is okay. I want to display a window, so this, and then let's just choose a really small scale so it's somewhat Okay, one eighth to one inch. Hmm, about three quarter to one inch. There we go. And then we'll just center the plot, and then we should be able to hit preview. And so, as you can see now, we've got our thick line weights on the outside, our medium line weights on the inside, and then our really fine line weights for the fine detail. <clears throat> so that's that's good. Okay, so now. Uh, if we want to build a house out of this, it's going to be kind of inconvenient because what we're going to have to do is flip these blocks around. Like, say I want to put this guy down here. I'm going to type CP for copy, kind of move them out of the way. And then I select them again, and i got to mirror them. And then I have to try and select it, but I want to make sure that I don't select the concrete. i got to try and place it in here. That's kind of annoying. So what we can do is we can actually add uh, dynamic features to these blocks to make them easier to flip. So again, I double click on my block, and I want to make sure I'm selecting the right one. Double click it again, that brings me to the block editor. And so now we're going to add uh, some parameters to this. So up here, we want a uh, flip parameter. And I'm going to make sure I get the midpoint, because this is kind of the line we're going to flip along. Click. And so that's a flipper. We want one grip. So you can like flip it one way. And then we'll hit spacebar to do that again. Spacebar apparently doesn't work. Let's add another flip. So you flip the other way. Okay, so now we've got two flippers. And what we're gonna do is these are just kind of the handles that we just added, and now we have to actually add the action. And so we want to add a flip action. We select the handle that we want to activate it. And then we select the objects that we want to flip, and we actually want to flip all the objects. And mm, we'll see if that worked. So we can actually go under um, test. There should be a test. Test block. And so now we can test and see if that worked. Yep. So we click and it flips. Flips the block for us. Now we got to go put that other one in so we can close the test block. And we're just going to do the same thing over again. We're going to hit a flip action. We want that to be the parameter. We want to select everything and hit enter. And now we can test the block to make sure that that completely worked. We select our block and now we can flip it any way we want. Close block editor. But now we can select our blocks and just kind of stick them together like Legos. We probably want to add a rotation for this guy. Let's do that really quick, because otherwise we gotta kind of like go up here, select the center, and rotate. Which is kind of annoying. So let's add some rotation handles right on the edge. Again, double click. This time we're gonna be modifying straight. We're going to add a rotation pointer right on center line. This just kind of shows you how big it is. I'm gonna. Now 
now we have the handle. Let's add one more of those at the bottom. You never know which way you want to rotate. And this guy can actually kind of see if we can get this guy a little higher. There we go. Just so it's easier to grab those rotation handles and they're not overlapping with our features. Okay, so now we have to add our action. We want to add a rotate. We select the parameter that we want to uh, uh, control the action. We select all the app. Rotate. And there we go. Pretty easy. Let's do the same thing for the top. And now we select all the objects that we want to rotate. And now we've got this bus set up. We can go ahead and try and test it out. If I click on my block, I should be able to rotate. Yep, see now I can rotate it all the way around. And I can do it from either side. It's kind of nifty. Plus the block editor, save the changes. So now we can actually put our blocks together really quick. So I'm going to take a new block. Hmm, you know, it looks like we're actually going to need a rotate on this guy too. So let's go ahead and add that in. The problem though is it's not going to, we should have put all our handles in before we put the actions in. Otherwise, um, we're going to have problems with the handles not moving when we apply the action. So maybe I'll leave that to you for an exercise. But uh, yeah, just a really quick way to speed up your process. That way you don't have to redraw these things over and over again. And the other really nice thing is um, if you made a mistake on any of these blocks, like you found out the dimensions wrong, you can just change the block definition and you don't have to actually go back and uh, change every single block. So it saves a lot of time. Quick on this time. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe.